Hey guys, welcome back to Foam2. In this video, we are going to cover the basics of Snappy X Mesh. Snappy X Mesh is a standard utility available in OpenFoam that allows you to create complex meshes from 3D CAD models. In this video, I'm going to do meshing for a train model. You can download this train model from this uh, part cloud. It's uh, 700 type Shinkansen. I will put this uh, link of this CAD model in the video description below. In this first part of the video, I'm going to cover castellated mesh. Castellated mesh is the first step uh, for creating mesh from SnapX mesh. Step zero or preprocessor for the mesh is creating the block mesh or background mesh for SnapX mesh. I've already covered details on block mesh in the previous video. You can find link to that video in the in the video description below. You can find more details on Snappy X Mesh in the user guide. Just uh, Google something like OpenFoam Snappy X Mesh, and you will end up at this uh, mesh generation user guide with Snappy X Mesh. All you need, really, to to do Snappy X Mesh or use Snappy X Mesh is a CAD geometry. It could either be STL or it could be a wavefront OBJ or dot OBJ file. STL is a really popular format which is used for 3D printing as an industry standard. So you will be able to find a lot of STL geometries for free online. Before you use them, just make sure that you're complying with the license terms of uh, STL usage. In the first part of castellated mesh, what SnapX Mesh does is it tries to find all the cells where the STL file intersects with the background mesh. In the second step, it tries to cut the mesh at the intersections and refine the mesh at the intersections. Once the refinement is completed, that's when it gets, gets to removal of the cells that are not needed. The removal is based upon where you specify the points Broadly speaking, there are two regions when you're, when you're trying to mesh, the region inside the STL and region outside the STL. So if you specify your point outside the STL, it's going to keep the mesh outside of the STL. If you specify point inside the STL, it's going to keep the mesh inside the STL and remove everything else. After the first step of castellated meshing, you're left with something that looks exactly like this as shown in the user guide. You will be left with block cells along the boundaries and the cells won't really be snapped to the surface. The snapping is in the next step of Snappy X Mesh and I will cover that in the next video. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the Pits Daily case setup. I've already set up the case here and I'm going to walk you through all the steps of Snappy X Mesh. The first thing that you have to do is download this OBJ file, or if you have a different OBJ or STL file of your choice, you can paste that in, uh, in the designated location. For Snappy X Mesh, all the CAD geometry, STLs, or OBJ need to reside in this dry surface directory that sits under constant. So just create a dry surface directory if you already haven't uh, set up, just create a directory and put your OBJ or STL file in Trisurface. Once that is completed, you can, uh, for instance, you can view your STL file or Trisurface file in Paraview directly. You don't need a special software to view the STL or uh, OBJ files. I'm going to show you the Shenkinsen STL file that I've downloaded. You can simply go to Paraview and open from constant try surface and you'll you'll be able to see the the train in Paraview. If you switch the view to surface with edges and make solid color you will be able to view the train and as you can see the entire surface is divided into triangles and that's where the name comes from the tri surface uh, as the source. In system directory, as always, you're going to have control dict, FE schemes, FE options. In addition, you're going to have mesh quality dict and snappy X mesh dict. You can find these two files in 
dollar foam etc in this etc you have a lot of resources that you can, you can use so go to template inflow outflow and in system directory you will see mesh quality dict and snappy x mesh dict you can simply you can simply start by copying these files from this into your system directory for starters you don't have to edit this mesh quality dict for now you can simply use the default settings so i'm going to use uh, snappy x mesh dict to explain what's happening inside so as i mentioned before the the meshing takes uh, place in three steps the first step is castellated mesh the next is snapping where your castellated mesh snaps to the surface and the final step is layer addition. In this video, I'm only going to cover castellated mesh. So we tell SnappyX Mesh what geometry to use using this dictionary entry geometry. So I'm going to create a train geometry out of train.stl, which is of type tri-surface mesh. Then I'm going to refine the surfaces at level two, where level zero is your base mesh. The location in mesh I'm specifying as minus 0 0.01, 0 0.1, and 0 0.1, which happens to sit in my external domain. So I'm going to keep everything that is outside of STL and delete the mesh inside STL. N cells between levels indicates when the mesh transitions from my zero level to level two, for instance, it's going to create three steps. So it creates a gradual transition from one level to the other. For the simplicity of the meshing, uh, the block mesh that I'm going to use is a really, really thin slice along the length of the train. If you want to view, I can show you real quick what I mean by a thin slice. Let me open the STL one more time. So for this simplicity, I'm going to take a slice along the section and you will see the geometry like this. So I'm going to create a mesh uh, using this thin slice, and I'm going to use a slice along X of really, really small thickness. So as you can see here in block mesh, I have a slice along X of thickness 0.02 meters, and I'm meshing along the length with block mesh domain extending from two to minus 12, and in Y direction going from zero to three. Since I'm not going to solve along the, along the thickness, I'm going to add one cell in X direction, and I'm going to add 20 and 100 cells in Y and Z respectively. For the boundary, I have the bottom boundary set up as wall, the front and back set up as empty, the inlet and outlet are treated as patches, where the outlet is formed by the top and the end surface of the block mesh. So given that, Let's first start by creating our background mesh, which can be executed with the command block mesh. And I'm gonna open Parafoam on one side to show you the transition from the, from the block mesh or the background mesh to the castellated mesh. So as you can see here, this is how my, let's make it bigger, it's easy. So this is how my background mesh looks like. It's a, pretty neat looking block mesh. The next thing that I'm gonna do, assuming you have already set up your snappy, snappy X mesh dict, I'm going to keep the switches for snap and add layers off. I'm going to execute snappy X mesh, press enter. So it will do a few things and it would have already completed execution in five to 10 seconds since the geometry is really simple. Once that is completed, you have to hit refresh times and you should be able to see, if you, if you click the latest time, you should be able to see the generated mesh from castellated mesh. As I mentioned earlier, after castellated mesh, the mesh does not conform to the surface. So you will see this uh, crooked or edgy kind of mesh where literally the STL cut the background mesh and kept all the cells that intersected with the surface. So it hasn't really smoothened to the surface, but you can pretty much make out the basics, basic shape of your STL. For comparison, let's open the STL.
there we go so that's how the mesh has conformed to the STL surface but it hasn't really connected to the surface as you can see there are some empty pockets between your cells and the surfaces those pockets can be bridged or removed by using snap meshing that I will cover in the next video thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one bye